Welcome to So Summit. Today we have with us a very special guest, David Melzer. Thank you for joining us. He's the co-founder of Sports One Marketing and formerly served as the CEO of the renowned Lee Steinberg Sports and Entertainment Agency, which was the inspiration for the movie Jerry Maguire. Of course, I mean, who doesn't like that film? The real Jerry Maguire is with us. His life's mission is to empower over 1 billion people to be happy. This simple yet powerful mission has led him to an incredible journey to provide one thing, value. In all of his content and communication, that's exactly what you receive. As part of that mission for the past 20 years, he's been providing free weekly trainings to empower others, to empower others to be happy. Thank you, David. Thank you, David, for joining us. Oh my goodness, I am so excited to be here. There is no place I'd rather plant seeds under trees. I may never sit under, but to empower such a young, vibrant group around the world with the So Summit is an inspiration to me, and I just had to be here. So thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. So we're going to kickstart straight away with uh, a couple of questions that we've uh, lined up for you, and we know how you uh, like being spontaneous. So, uh, I mean, we've seen you doing a lot of talks and on various platforms, and uh, most of them usually cover a wide range of topics. Uh, what we like to know is how you keep up with that energy and, and where does that drive still stay in for like 20 years now? You know, it's really about three things, the from, the through, and the to. And when you understand that continuum of what we're drawing that energy from, that we're always connected from this unbelievable source of light, love, and lessons, that we are the ones that create the interference, corrosion, the uh, void shortages and obstacles between that unbelievable power in ourselves. And once we focus our free will on clearing that connection between what we're connected from and allowing it to come through us uh, with our own values, which allow us to appreciate what comes through, meaning add value to it, and most importantly, what we're connected to. A tree has no branches. One tree should never go, one branch, I'm sorry, should never go to war against another branch. No country, no sex, no religion. All of us are all connected from and through and to all the same things. And so I've lived my life with a passion and a purpose and an inspiration to make sure that I can teach other people how to connect from that source through themselves and to everything and everyone that they're connected to. I mean, I cannot agree with you less. Um, you know, um, So Summit is all about Indian startups uh, becoming, uh, evolving into a, a better space and, and to all the startup founders, including myself, um, we always stumble upon a lot of macro and micro decisions in, in life and business, you know, and uh, we always find it hard to be able to find that right decision to make. Uh, how do I tackle such decision making? So for me, it's five daily habits that allow us to make those decisions in order to maximize three things, our productivity. So we want to make decisions that allow us to add value, to be productive. Mm -hmm. Secondly, accessibility. We wanna make decisions that allow us to be more accessible to others, but most importantly, access what we want. So receiving is so important in the idea of decision-making. And then thirdly, we wanna make our decisions based on gratitude. Finding in every decision, the light, the love, and the lessons to allow us to expand, accelerate, and grow. And so through those perspectives, those lenses, we want to, number one, take inventory of our own values. When you take inventory of your own values every day, personal values, our non-negotiable values, our experiential values of what we wanna to experience today, our giving values of who and what we wanna to give to and through, and then finally, and most importantly, our receiving values. What is it that we want? Not why, but what is it that we want? And when we take inventory of our values and we accept the fact that we're hypocrites, what I mean by that is we accept the fact that we're growing and learning and changing so that when I was your age, my values were completely different than they are today at 52. And I'm proud of that. And yet some people in your life will judge you. They will take snapshots of you 
for your values when you were 17 or 27 or 37, even though you're 52 and have grown? Well, we make our decisions based off of those values. And if you don't take inventory of your values, you're always going to be lost with the 99% of the 99%. You're not going to be with the empty milers, the 1% of the 1%. And it's not the extra milers. Those sit at the 1%. The empty milers sit with the 1% of the 1%. The people who know their values and can quickly assimilate the situation that they're in and understand how it's synergistic, aligned to, supplementary to, those four key values that are weighted differently and changing every day without any fear at all, which is the fifth practice of practicing ending fear, which is the ability and capability of clearing that connection of the from, the through, and the to for everyone to make the best decisions to create abundance. Because what happens is most people live and make decisions in a world of not enough. Everything's happening to them. They have no accountability. They are victims. They spend their day asking, why me? Why me? Well, I'm going to bring you into a world of try me and not even to live in a world of just enough. I lived in that world of just enough. I was a millionaire nine months out of law school, living in a world of just enough, just enough for me. Most people that live in the world of just enough, things don't happen to them. They happen for them, but they're usually buying things they don't need. They're buying different things they don't need. They're actually buying things a lot of time to impress people that they don't even like. What you're going to do with your decision makings based on your values is to create an abundant world where there's more than enough of everything for everyone, that you live without fear, that just because someone else has something doesn't mean you can't have what you want as well, because there's more than enough of everything that comes from the great source through you to others. Sure, I mean, that's great. Uh, we're trying to change the world to try me. And, and there is abundance for everyone to make something out of their lives, uh, which comes to my next question is, uh, you know, it's interesting that we always land up having our businesses take over our lives. And it's unfortunate that we never find that balance in, in being able to be happy with your business. So uh, tell us something about how we should approach that better so it, it can be more beneficial to both. Well, two things. One, you know, you have control of your mindset and your heart set. Your mindset is how you see things and your heart sets how you feel things. You have control of that. No one else has control. And so you need to stop looking at things as business and not business, as work and as play. I see things as activity uh, and I break things down to activity I get paid for and activity I don't get paid for. And I'm on a consistent, persistent pursuit to get paid for the most activity during my man-made construct of 24 hours every single day. And so the first thing that I suggest people do is shift your mindset and heart set about your activities to simply create activities you get paid for and activities you don't get paid for, but you're finding the light, the love, and the lessons in all activities. You're enjoying the consistent, persistent pursuit of all your activities, whether you're paid or not, but there's no such thing as business values and play values. There's just values. And then secondly, utilizing your routine that is relying upon your values. So there should be two routines in your life, a set routine, when you're able and capable of effectuating a normal day. So for me, I wake up at 4 a.m. every day, but my routine doesn't start at 4 a.m. My routine starts the night before. My tomorrow starts today. So I believe that the biggest mistake that most people make is they don't have an unwinding routine. Now, if I went and asked you to go run a marathon, uh, and I asked you, what, you know, go run a marathon, you would tell me, Dave, I got to warm up. Well, when I'm asking you to go sleep for eight hours, which takes more than a marathon, most people can do a marathon four or five hours, an average person, but here's eight hours a day. Well, you know how you warm up for sleep is you unwind. And so my tomorrow starts today. My routine starts last night to make sure that I wake up at 4 a.m. today I meditate for 20 minutes. I find my highest frequency so that I can plateau and grow in my day. And most people, they live the myth of Sisyphus. It's an old Greek story about a man who pulled a boulder up to the top of the hill every single day just to have it roll down to start over the next day. 
I want you to plateau and grow. I want you to find your highest frequency. I want you to start your routine tonight in order to effectuate where you want to start at the highest frequency tomorrow to plateau and grow. Meditation will allow you to do that. Then I take 10 minutes to get ready and I spend a minimum of an hour a day on my health. Then I spend a minimum of an hour and a half studying uh, just so you all may be students or frequently or recently have been students. The uh, mathematical equation of luck uh, is studying. What does that mean? Well, I define studying as number one, what you focus in on or pay attention to, plus what you give intention to. Uh, I call that the law of Goya. Uh, get off your ass. The law of Goya indicates what you think, say, do, and believe. And if you take what you pay attention to and you add it to what you give your intention to, then the law of attraction will take place, meaning the coincidences that you want in your life will occur. And people will tell you that you're lucky. So I study an hour and a half a day, and then I spend a minimum of an hour with my family then I execute on the studying that I had in my calendar of what I had planned, what I didn't have planned, the empty space, and my sleep. Then after I execute on the student in the calendar, I once again spend an hour and a half with my family uninterrupted, one more hour studying, and then I have an unwind routine so I can start over. If that's my normal routine, if something should happen, that I had not planned for, or family comes to town, a celebrity event, or something that throws off my normal routine, I then go to an adjustable routine, an adaptable routine that's based off of my values. Number one values my health. So I spend a minimum of an hour a day on my health. Number two values my family. So I spend a minimum of 30 minutes with my wife, a minimum of 30 minutes with my son, a minimum of two minutes with each of my three teenage daughters. I know you're laughing, I asked for five. You probably are like, I'll never give my parents five. Well, my girls didn't give me five either, they gave me two. And then most importantly, I have a minimum of one minute a day for my mom. And if you wanna get along with your parents better, let me give you the trick. This was the super trick of the day, probably the most valuable thing I'm gonna teach. All you need to do is spend a minute a day with your parents, a minute a day is worth more than an hour on a Saturday, and tell your parents these four things. One, you're healthy. Two, you're happy. Three, you love them. And four, you appreciate them. If you tell your parents within one minute, every single day, those four things, your relationships will prosper, grow, accelerate, and allow you to have less interference, not from, but through, to those really important people in your life, parents who were so relative to. That is how we live this balanced life. What other people say, how do you do so much? How are you so balanced between family and health and work? Because I don't believe in it. I'm trying to maximize how I can make money speaking for free to you guys. I'm looking for activity that I can get paid for. I have a 520 rule. I keep and try to keep all of my phone calls to five minutes. I keep these interviews to 20 and I provide as much value as I can. I'm accessible as I can. I'm trying to access what I want, the inspiration from, through, and to, and most importantly, of course, be as gracious as I can to allow others to plant these seeds under trees that I may never sit under. Wow, that was so insightful. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, uh, most of us uh, deal with the problems of not being able to get our basics right, and that's exactly where uh, I think you're coming from, you're, you're sort of telling us to keep our basics right so that the outcome is so much more positive and uh, which comes uh, to your and question. Don't, and don't attach your emotions to those outcomes. <laughs> attach your emotions to the enjoyment of the consistent, persistent pursuit of the outcome. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, some of us, uh, unfortunately, are in situations which have already had a negative uh, impact on our lives and we're probably struggling with something at the moment. Uh, what would you like to tell those startups, business owners, founders out there to find a way to tackle a negative outcome into a positive one? So look, pain, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, and financial pain. Those are usually the struggles that entrepreneurs go through. Those are the normal struggles that people go through, but entrepreneurs especially 
are hyper exaggerated in those areas. So this type of pain that you're all experiencing, and I experience every day, uh, those pains have to be seen not as a stop sign. The number one reason an entrepreneur fails is because they quit. The reason they quit is because their senses are weak and their memories are weaker. They don't understand how exponential growth acceleration works. They don't understand that if you have a 20 year plan, which is a normal overnight success in 20 years, that you're not going to be halfway there until 19 years. It doesn't happen in 10 years. You're not even going to be 25% of the way there until 18 years. So you have to enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential. You have to detach your emotions from the outcome and put it into the consistent, persistent pursuit of understanding pain. When pain arises, mental, physical, spiritual, and emotional, and financial pain, which is guaranteeing to arise to everyone, but especially entrepreneurs, you can't see it as a stop sign. You can't quit. You have to see pain as an indicator. It's a turn signal. It's indicating that you have a lesson to learn. It's a blessing. You're going to learn something, grow, accelerate. And guess what? It's going to push you and turn you in a better direction to a better place or make your situation better. The basics of pain is this. You are exactly where you're supposed to be. You're in the right place at the perfect time. And your job is to enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential. In other words, angle to what you want by using your values, asking and attracting, studying what you need, doing it now, practicing any fear. Keep on angling to what you want. But number one thing, have faith not to quit. Have the desire to must be what you can be. Because if you have faith, not only are you happy where you're at, not only will you angle to where you want to be, but you will have faith that you'll end up somewhere better. And with that faith, you will end up somewhere better. I promise you, because you won't quit at 10 years thinking you should be halfway there. You won't quit at 18 years thinking you're almost there. You won't quit at 19 years, but you'll make it all the way to 100. And then it turns to 200, 400, 800% of the way there. That's the 1% of the 1%. You need to run in the empty mile. You need to utilize these pragmatic ways in order to effectuate what you want in your life. Vote for what you want. Don't, for what you, don't vote for what you don't want because you'll get what you don't want. Don't vote for what other people, especially your parents, want for you because you'll end up with what they want for you and then you'll resent them for it. Vote for what you want. Take inventory of your values, ask and attract, study what you want, do it now and practice ending fear. You are where you're supposed to be at the right way at the perfect time. Angle to something better. Pain is an indicator, a turn signal, pushing you to somewhere better, a better place in a better situation and have faith that you'll end up somewhere better than that. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much for that, David. In fact, uh, um, a lot of us uh, do struggle with understanding that this is the correct path or, or, or should I take another path? Am I on the right path to what I really want to achieve? And that uh, normally becomes a situation where we keep questioning ourselves. Uh, of course, I mean, uh, what is that uh, situation to you? What do you think a person should know uh, all about himself and deciding whether he's on the right path or not? You're always on the right path. You just, when you're telling yourself that you're not, you need to cancel that out. You're always on there. As long as you find the light, the love, and the lessons in what you do, you're on the right path. The path is, path is not a straight path. You want to make God laugh? Come up with a well-developed plan. Your path is where you are as long as you are enjoying it every day without quit. As long as you're enjoying that journey, you're on the right path. You'll end up in a better place than you even can imagine as long as you don't vote for what you don't want. Listen to the negative thoughts and words. Don't vote for what other people want. Don't listen to their judgments and conditions. People will laugh at you. People will scoff at you. And then they will applaud you. I promise you. But if you quit, you won't get there. You got to stay in business. You got to continue to the journey. You got to know that you will do your best in the pursuit of your own potential. Great. So we're, uh, we're at the end of this, David, and this is probably the last question uh, that we'd like to ask. What is uh, your success mantra and what would you like to tell the Indian startups out there as to how they can help evolve in, in, in their lives and their businesses? My, my success mantra is simple. I want you all to create abundance. In other words, I want you to make a lot of money. I want you to help a lot of people and have a lot of fun and be happy. Make a lot of money, help a lot of people, have a lot of fun, 
I do a free training every Friday that you all can join me at. You all can email me, david at dmelzer.com. You can go to Spotify and watch all my trainings for free. I will send you all my exercises, guides, and books for free. Just email me, david at dmelzer.com. Go to Spotify. I'm featured there. Go to Entrepreneur Magazine. I'm featured there. Go to any platform. The playbook is featured there with all of my trainings, all of my videos. They're all free. I'm here to empower you to empower others to be happy by making more money, helping more people, and having more fun. The last thing I'm going to say is be kind to your future self and do good deeds. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I got to go to my next interview. Please reach out, david at dmelzer.com. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you so much for your time.